Okay friends, welcome back. I hope you are doing fine. So in this session, we'll clearly understand what are the requirements in terms of technical expertise for an embedded system engineer. You want to become one. What are all the things that you need to know? At the entry level, there are some things to know. At an expert level, at an experience level, you have something else to know. So we need to clarify that very clearly and many people ask me this question in the chat box and even through personal mail, what are all the skill sets that I need to develop? So this session would help you in understanding what are all the things that are required for you to become an embedded engineer. Right, it's a very simple and five minute session. So I hope you definitely like it. Before we go into the details or specifics of what you need to learn, there are some prerequisites. These prerequisites are definitely expected and many of us do not know some of these components. So let's understand first what are the prerequisites. The first one is fundamental mathematics. The binaries, the Boolean stuff. When you go with digital electronics conversion from one to one, binary to octal, octal to binary, those kind of questions are still asked in the interviews and that helps you as well when you code at times with embedded systems. So make sure that you know the Boolean, the conversion stuff, the binary stuff, all those are very fundamental and important. Circuit component understanding. I give you a circuit diagram. You should be able to understand clearly what the circuit does. And I give you a board. You need to understand what are all the components over there. So this understanding definitely helps you in clearly recognizing what are all the components used in the particular board when you are trying to debug or when you are trying to build something over and above it. Analog electronics fundamentals followed by digital electronics fundamentals. These two are immensely important. Please be very strong in the fundamentals. I did not quote the complex co components there. Fundamentals are something which are very, very important. Make sure that you don't miss it. For example, if they ask you about flip-flops, latches, how do we use which kind of flip-flop for which kind of purposes, you should be able to say very clearly. The registers, all these things are to be learned without fail. Make sure that this is a prerequisite. So this is not something that is to be learned for, uh, I mean, this is not something that is to be learned uh, which will help you becoming embedded system engineer. Instead, this will help you becoming anything. So please make sure that you are very clear with this fundamentals. Soldering know-how. Please have practical knowledge. Most of us uh, do not have an exposure to how do we solder things because all these bases are very simple and we are using breadboard, we are connecting things easily. But go to the next level where we can solder components. We need to understand how do we solder things and how do we get it done. So soldering know-how helps you. UML. This is something that is very, very important and is expected by most of us as prerequisite. And the strong foundation in the C and the data structure. You are going to become an embedded system engineer. Welcome to the C world. You need to know programming. There is no other goal. And data structure knowledge definitely helps you have the fundamentals and the foundations very strong there. Debugging skills. This is something that I would rate very high. You are a programmer. Great. You are a debugger. Very good. So if you have both these skills connected together, you will become the most wanted one. So please learn usage of how do we use GNU debugger. JTAG, are, uh, JTAG is a kind of debugger that is available, which we will see at a higher level. But at the entry level, as a prerequisite, you should know how do we debug. With the kind of tool like GNU debugger, if you understand how do we keep a breakpoint, how do we analyze the code, they are going to be really, really helpful. Well, what are the expectations at an entry level? I'm a fresher. What are the expectations? The languages like C, Python, C++. At least one of these three, you should be very strong and we will expect you. I mean, the interviewers will expect you to be really good at that. And if you know embedded C programming, that's going to be very, very helpful. In fact, you are expected to know the fundamentals. And assembly language programming, you must have studied in your engineering courses or the UG courses, whatever you are doing. So make sure that you keep in touch with that because they are still in the market and they are very useful for device driver developments and stuff like that. There are some protocols which we need to definitely know at entry level. SPA, I2C, CAN, UART. There are many other protocols which can be added to the list, but I picked the best of the four which are very important. So likewise, if you find few other protocols, like 10 protocols which you know, Please make sure that you recollect the a very clear structure of the protocols. You recollect everything about the protocols very clearly. And in fact, if you can uh, probably know where they are used and how they are used, that's going to be very helpful. Versioning. That's very important. I write the code. I corrected it. I sent it again into the system. I rewrite it. I again push it into the system. The commit and the pullout. All these are very important to be understood. And please know very clearly about versioning. And learn the usage of Git. This is something this is missing. Some of us are not using Git still now, so please make sure that Git is being used everywhere and learn the complete usage of Git because everybody expects that you must know Git. And microcontrollers, this is something very, very important. We cannot miss it and we cannot afford to miss it uh, when we wish to become an embedded system engineer. 
complete know of one microcontroller is very very important i prefer you to know at least 8051 because it is the easiest when you learn 8051 you will understand how much easier it is to uh, learn microcontrollers it's very simple efficient and easy to use but if you have knowledge of arm 7 arm 9 or any other arm version that's going to be pretty helpful as well learn how peripherals are interfaced how timers are used why dac adc is needed and sensors and the interfacing all these things are coming alongside this microcontroller's part you need to learn that because most of the microcontrollers are expected to be interfaced with peripherals and you need to know how do we use all this operating systems uh, and i will talk about operating systems a little later because that's one of the topics that's very important but again uh, you must know how to operate cro's uh, please recollect you must have used it in the labs please recollect how do we operate what are all the modes available what are the things that we need to definitely learn with operating cro's that's important second thing is multimeters we have digital multimeter which is very comfortable right now learn using it analog multimeters whatever we had in the early stages if you are still using it that's great learn using multimeters that's the point so you need to know what are all the modes available how do we test it because there are interviewers who still go into it in depth because they want fundamentals to be very strong and testing when you build a product you are expected to know how do we test it so how do we write test cases how do we automate test cases understanding the test cases and reviewing the test cases these are very very important and one additional thing that i would tell here at the entry level operating systems learn the fundamentals of operating systems here though it is not at a real time operating systems level where you can code a lot and build systems with our uh, atas features at least this level in this level entry level you need to know the fundamentals of the operating system so make sure that you include it in this entry level expectations so as an entry level engineer one programming language must know protocols versioning one microcontroller at least cro's multimeters kind of tools operating stuff and then testing all these together will help you in getting a clear stuff now the most important point comes here which is nothing but the dynamic memory allocation memory monitoring freeing the memory all these are very very important and the interviewers check it very strongly because embedded systems are all not very luxurious in terms of having memory so you need to free memory properly and you need to handle memory properly so the memory allocation memory handling and the memory related questions are quite common in embedded systems interview and you will have to be very strong there usage of ram sram dram and all the gates please make sure that you do not have any trouble over there in the fundamentals as i told you learn the mechanisms which are very very important in terms of operating systems the ipc mechanism the segmentation the paging these are very fundamental concepts and do not have any questions over there it should be very clear there is no doubt that you need to be very clear here and the software engineering questions are pretty common in any interviews when you go these days which are related to software again uh, the agile methods the life cycles the choices how do we build systems learn all those i mean you will have to be strong in these fundamentals these are all the expectations which are at the entry level so i'll i'll recollect all those what i said quickly languages must know protocols versioning microcontrollers operating uh, uh, usage of tools testing operating systems programming with memory uh, considerations and then software engineering all these are to be definitely covered and questions should come in these areas only and if you are fundamentally strong in these areas i think it will be very easy for you to crack the interview advanced level i mean when you are experienced person you would obviously know which domain you are going so based on domains for example healthcare automotive aeronautics manufacturing there are some things which are expected to my knowledge i have collected some information and i am putting it all here when it comes to automotive you will use autosar misra c can flexrail lin etc so you you definitely have to have knowledge there where you are going in specifics if you are applying for automotive engineer job for example which is connecting with uh, any automotive company you must know some of these at least where you can definitely talk about that and your experience in that and design for manufacturability design for testing we call it tfm and uh, tft these are very very important as well and please know about the certifications and the standards for example if you are building a product for india there are some certifications that you need to go if you are building a product for europe or for us there are some certifications available there so be familiar with that you need to know for whom you are building the product and you need to know what are all the certifications that you need to adhere to so these are really very important and i think you can pay attention there as well so overall if you see for entry level i have listed some of the prerequisites followed by Uh, some of the core components that you need to know for advanced level based on the domain and based on the area that you are going to work you need to learn things i hope this session was helpful and in case you have questions suggestions please go ahead and type it in the comment section and if you have like the channel and the content please give a thumbs up i'll be happy to see it thank you